In this video, we are going to look at a transportation problem and see how we can use linear programming to find the optimal solution to a transportation problem example. Tropic Sun is a leading grower and distributor of fresh citrus products with three large citrus groves scattered around central Florida in the cities of Mount Dora, Eustis, and Clermont. Tropic Sun currently has 275,000 bushels of citrus at the grove in Mount Dora, 400,000 bushels at the grove in Eustis, and 300,000 bushels at the grove in Clermont. Tropic Sun has citrus processing plants in Ocala, Orlando, and Leesburg with processing capacities to handle 200,000, 600,000, and 225,000 bushels, respectively. Tropic Sun contracts with a local trucking company to transport its fruit from the groves to the processing plants. The trucking company charges a flat rate for every mile that each bushel of fruits must be transported. Each mile a bushel of fruit travels is known as a bushel mile. In this graph, it tells us about the uh, connection between groves and the processing plants. Tropic Sun has three groves in Mondora, Eustis, and Clermont. And for convenience, we call them location 1, 2, and 3. On the other side, Tropic Sun has three processing plants in Ocala, Orlando, and Leesburg. For convenience, we call them location 4, 5, and 6. And citrus in Mondora can be transported to any of the uh, location 4, 5, and 6. It is also true for citrus in location 2, use this. In this problem, the company Tropic Sun, of course, would like to minimize the total transportation cost. But because the trucking company charges a flat fee for each bushel mile, it is the same as minimizing the total bushel miles. So the decision here is going to be about, for example, how many bushels of citrus in Mondora location 1 will be transported to location 4, 5, and 6 respectively. Similarly, how many bushels of citrus from location 2 will be transported to location 4, 5 and 6, and so on and so forth. Before we move on to the next slide, I want to point out one thing. Let's look at the supply side. The total supply available from the three groves, 275,000 in location 1, 400,000 in location 2, and 300,000 in location 3. So the total amount of supply would be 975,000 bushels. Now look at the uh, processing capacity side. The total processing capacity will be the sum of 200,000, 600,000, and 225,000. Therefore, the total processing capacity is 1,025,000 bushels which is greater than the total amount of supply. Now let's see how we are going to define the decision variables for this transportation problem. A simple way of defining the decision variables in this case would be x subscript ij, which is the number of bushels shipped from location i to location j. i could be 1, 2, or 3, and j could be 4, 5, or 6. For example, x14 is the number of bushels shipped from Mondora, location 1, to Ocala, location 4, and x34 is 
the number of bushels shipped from location three, Cromont, to location four, Okela, and so on and so forth. Next, we're going to take a look how we're going to formulate our objective function. Recall that it is going to be a flat rate for each bushel mile. So to minimize the total transportation cost is to minimize total bushel miles. Here's how we're going to get our objective function, the total number of bushel miles. 21 times x14 plus all the way to 25 times x36. Let's look at the first term, 21 times x14. x14 is how many bushels of citrus will be transported from location 1 to location 4, and 25 is the distance between location 1 and location 4. So 21 times x14 is the total bushel miles between location 1 and 4. And similarly, 50 times x15 is the total bushel miles between location 1 and 5, and so on and so forth. We add all those nine terms together, that will be the total bushel miles for the entire company. Next, let's see how we're going to formulate all those constraints. First of all, let's look at the uh, capacity constraints. We have three processing plants in location 4, 5, and 6. The total number of bushels received in location 4 should be no more than its capacity of 200,000. Now let's see how many bushels of citrus location 4 will be receiving. And they must be coming from location 1, 2, or 3. So the total bushels of citrus location 4 will be receiving is the sum of x14, x24, and x34, and the sum must be no more than 200,000. Similarly, we can formulate capacity constraints for location 5, Orlando, and location 6, Leesburg. And those are the three capacity constraints. Next, let's look at the supply constraints. Let's look at the Mandora location 1 as our example. How many bushels of citrus will be shipped out of Mandora location 1? And it's going to be the sum of total bushels shifted to location 4, 5, and 6 from Mandora. That is, the sum of x14 x15 and x16. The supply availability in Mandora is 275,000 bushels. So the first the supply constraint is x14 plus x15 plus 16 equals 275,000. You may wonder why not less than or equal to 275,000. Think about it. If those three constraints were of less than or equal to type, what would be the potential optimal solution? And it should be pretty obvious. In that case, the optimal solution would be zeros all the way. That is to say, optimal solution will be x14 all the way to x36. All of those 12 decision variables will be equal to zero. In that case, total transportation cost total push of miles will be minimized. Well, of course, it is zero, but does it make any sense? No, it doesn't. It means the traffic sun will be doing nothing at all, or the citrus will stay put. Recall that previously I mentioned that the total supply is less than the total capacity. What's going to be in the best interest of traffic sun it is going to be shipping everything out of all those three groups because we have enough processing capacity to handle that. As a result, the three supply constraints are of the equal type and the three capacity constraints are of the less than or equal to type. 
what if the total capacity is less than the total supply? In that case, the three capacity constraints are going to be of equal type, and the three supply constraints are going to be of the less than or equal to type. Of course, we are going to have the uh, non-negative constraints as well. All those 12 decision variables are going to be non-negative. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to solve this linear problem model for a transportation problem in Excel using our old friend solver.